All that this morning. Meanwhile, moving on to a lighter topic. Autumn may be creeping up on us, but apparently it's never too early to think spring. That's because this is the time of year to harvest seeds and to make sure next year's garden is a thing of beauty. Here to show us how garden expert Derek Thomas is here with us this morning. Good morning, Derek. Good morning. And I got the memo. I know you I, did. I, purple. There you <laughs> we go. Got the purple. Yeah. So um, this is the you know, this is the time of year we gotta start uh, thinking about for next year preserving things for, for that. Well, so how do we do it? It's, it's, it's absolutely the right time to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a good time to also think about what you may have envied a little bit in your neighbor's garden and do a seed swap group or something like that. Um, what you want to do this time of the year is think about your plants and your veggies that really were good and ones that you would like to have again. And it's also a way to make sure that your, you know, organic seeds have become very, very big and there's a marketplace for them now. And if you've grown things out yourself and you know that you haven't used any chemicals or any pesticides or anything like that, you can also be sure that the seeds that you're gonna be using for next year are organic. Um, the thing that I like to do is I like to label all of my packages because these are lavender seeds and these are one that looks similar oh, are yeah. rubecchia seeds. And so by the end of the winter, I'm not gonna be sure what this is. I also like to put the year. Some seeds will stay viable for a couple of years, some seeds won't. Um, the other thing is seeds like rubecchia and coneflower, which is echinacea, it needs a what's called a scarification period. And what that means is I will take these Black Eyed Susan seeds and at the end of winter, I'll actually put them in a container, put them outside and make sure that they freeze a couple of times. If they don't do that, chances are your seeds will not germinate because they need to be what's called scarified. Ooh, Derek, how, many do do those seeds <laughs> how many people do that? Derek, a lot of us do. A lot of us do. Derek, you have your seeds all neatly in your little Ziploc baggies. What are you going to do with them all winter? Do you just have like a bunch of bags sitting around the house? Well, that's no, 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 no. That's a, that's what do you a, do with them? That's a great I, That's a great question. And I brought this in because when you are going to be taking your pepper seeds, what you want to do is with the pepper, there's a membrane. You go ahead and you pull that off like that. And I will take these seeds, I will put them in the paper towel. And the paper towel, what the paper towel helps do is dry it up mm -hmm. so that you don't get any mold or anything like that. That's another thing that you want to make sure. If you've got moisture and stuff on the seeds when you're harvesting them, go ahead and put them in a paper towel for a while. Label it so that you know what you're going to do. Then you store it. You want to store it in a cool dry spot so it's somewhere where it's not going to get too too hot you know you don't want to put it on top of a radiator because that could actually kill the germ there's a little germ that and that's what that's the nucleus that actually starts next year's plant now, and so you the, store it oh go ahead you, you know you store this and then next season you'll break that out and as a matter of fact these peppers are peppers uh, from trinidad and the seeds were brought in and this is a a, a pepper that actually came from somewhere else. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So you, you can keep that going. Pepper cool. and lavender, you know, what are really some of the best things that you should try to harvest the seeds from and replant? I'm assuming there's not, not everything is, is great for that. Right. Not everything is great for that. And some of the things take more work, but mm -hmm. some of them are really great projects for kids and you can get the kids involved because for instance these are some black eyed susans and right at the bottom there you can see the seeds and it'll be a great experiment with the kids you put them outside you get them cold you know you get them scarified and then you plant them and then next year what you end up with because it gives you an instant turnaround and kids like, you know, kids have a short sure. attention span. So the next year, that seed that is, you know, the size of a pinhead is going to give them a flower. So things like that are really, really neat. But any of the seeds that you, you know, the flowers that we enjoy, the end result of that is Mother Nature producing seeds for next season. And so any of the plants that you grow that have seeds, even your tomatoes. Now, some of the things what you want to do is a little bit of research because some of your plants, like coneflower, 
can actually hybridize the first season. And what that means is if I started out with a pink coneflower, these seeds may not all produce pink coneflower. Derek, do us a favor. A lot of viewers are going to have more questions. We want to get to Tucker because we want to get to the anniversary of the Pentagon. But let them tweet you, and you can reply At to them Thomas Garden Guy. And I've gotten a lot of tweets about this, and that's mm -hmm. why we did the segment. And Wonderful. we bring these segments there to you. Go. you. If you have a question, he'll Thank respond Derek. to you. We promise. All right, Tucker Barnes, what's going on?